Already easy to record today. Seventeen to five. Uh, Seventeen to five. Uh, just, just fantastic. Everything was fantastic about that game. Uh, fantastic series. Just awesome. So we go to Houston tonight. Grayson's pitching. The Ashers throwing out a rookie, Jake Bloss. Don't know what to say about him, except he's 23 and barely pitched in the minors. Really, Ashers seem desperate. They're 35 and 40. Kyle Tucker, he's hurt. Uh, they released the Brayu. Verlander's hurt. Javier's hurt. Their other um, really good starting pitcher. They still have Valdez, the lefty. He'll pitch um, on Sunday. Their top three hitters are still fantastic. Altuve, Bregman, and Alvarez, but it feels like we're getting them at a good time. The Ashers have just had a hard time this year. I was thinking about it before this, um, before I was recording, I was like, man, if one of these teams, if you told me one of these teams was going to be 35 and 40, I would have really been nervous going into this, uh, you know, going into the season thinking, man, because the Ashers, I think their win total is 90 and a half. So they're definitely a desperate team. They're going to pull out all the stops. The crowd will probably be really into it. Um, and we're going to throw Grayson out there. So I will, I think the lineup just came out. So I glanced at it before I'll look at all the props. I'm going to lean heavy on Grayson tonight. I think, you know, it's a good matchup for him. He's goes back to Texas where he's from. So I'll see, I'll have my picks out in a few minutes, but let's, uh, so two things I want to talk about and really two people. So Adley and Gunner, because there was just, I don't know, the, the past two games have been so much fun that when I take a step back and think about it, there is, I, I really wanted to just to harp on a couple things. So well, first I want to talk about Adley because it has a, a gambling component to it. So yesterday I almost texted the chat when it was, uh, I think it was seven, when it was eight to one or then it was 11 to three, whatever it was at a couple points, I almost texted the chat. And then I was like, absolutely not. Can't do that. Cause you can't celebrate anything until you win the game. Like if you've been betting on sports long enough there, it's gone your way. It's gone against you, but you can't celebrate until the game's over. And that's it. And, it, and when that happened and I thought about texting the group chat, it took me back to the other night when Adley barely celebrated after he threw that guy out. And it's just awesome to watch because the perspective, hell, he's still so young, but the perspective that the team has led by him is fantastic because everybody else is jumping up and down, right? But that out didn't win the game. It, when he threw uh, Cabrera out at second, that was, you know, the, the the second out, right? So now there's nobody on base, it's 10th inning, we're up by one, but Tate still has to get Trevino out. And Adley's just just proper perspective. I know it's a small thing. I know it's a little thing, but it just like really stood out to me um, how the, it just embodies the team, right? Every, every time it feels like, man, they might lose three in a row. They might finally tailspin because they have too many injuries. Uh, the schedule's too hard. They don't have an off day. It's, this team is so easy to root for. So that was something that jumped out at me. And then obviously everybody's got their take on, you know, them throwing a gunner, but to, to me, what I can't get over is his ability to not have a single reaction, right? Like it's one thing. I don't think he's the only guy who wouldn't charge the mound or who wouldn't, you know, yell at the catcher or yell at the dugout or something, but not a single reaction. Like you couldn't get a, uh, you couldn't get anything out of him. you know, an angry face, but it's such a great teaching lesson. You know, and I coach, I've been coaching now for, God, I'm getting old, but been coaching for, I guess, eight years now. And you know, it's always easy to identify, frankly, who's got good parents at home or a good support system at home, uh, parent figures, father figures, mother figures, based on how the kid reacts to positive and negative things that are happening during sports. And Gunner, I really think that's why we won. I don't know if it's why we won 17 to five. But the karma that we had versus the karma they had is just unbelievable. Like they, the Yankees, I felt like crossed the line and by us not responding and we didn't respond because Gunner didn't get upset. So then if you're in the bullpen, you kind of feel weird getting upset because he didn't get upset. Whereas judge is carrying on like a baby It made the Yankees bullpen feel like they had to do something. So it's just another case in point as I digest that stupid NBA finals, 
about how easy it is to root for the Orioles. And when you're watching other sports or other teams and you're like, Hey, I don't think that guy's in fucking shape or wants to dribble the ball up down the court. And anyway, all right, let's not do that. But so yeah, the Orioles are just absolutely cruising Gunner and Adley make it extremely easy to root for. And I wrote uh, this morning, them as the one, two hitters. I mean, it's not even like a fan thing anymore. Uh, it, and also, if you think about it from from the bullpen perspective, at the end of the game, when you bet when you bet Mountcastle third, and then the guy's got to come in to face Gunner, Adley, and Mountcastle, you want to bring in the lefty right to face Gunner. So if if the number nine hitter is a right-handed batter, whether it's uh, pick whoever you wanted to be, Arias, uh, Mateo, McCann, whatever. But if your number nine hitter is a right-handed batter, and then Gunner's the lefty. You bring in the lefty to face Gunner, but then Adley gets a bat from the right side, which he's hitting like 850 or something ridiculous. He he gets a hit almost every time he's bat from the right side. And then Mountcastle gets to face a left-handed hitter. So this lineup has turned into, I mean, when I hear people like suggest, oh, we still need to make a trade, or why don't we bring this guy up, or why don't we do this? I'm like, it's you're really arguing on the on the margins. Like if you just look at how deep the team is. This lineup and yesterday was on full display. So I hope this is the start of what do we got? Another three weeks or so until the All Star break. We finished the All Star break with the Yankees at home. So it'd be nice to just carry this offense here for a while while the while the rotation, the bullpen kind of figure itself out. And we hopefully get Kramer back next week. So a lot of great things, a lot of positives. I could probably carry on here for forever about how great this team is, but it is still the middle of June, so we'll, uh, yeah, still a long race, but yeah, feeling great. Orioles, Astros, the odds are going to be, yeah, it, you're going to have to pay. And just a, as a reminder, now that we're, I guess we'll be favorites tonight and tomorrow, and then we'll see what the ball does on Sunday. But when the Orioles are big favorites like this, I know Jack's given out minus one and a half. For me, I, I only would do minus one. That way it's a push or nothing. So if you want to reduce the juice, right, if the Orioles are money line minus 150, 160, 170, or even higher, um, not tonight, but just in general, and you're like, it doesn't just have to be the Orioles. It could be any team. My suggestion now that they let you is do minus one, not minus one and a half, because it can be a one-run game. Minus one would be a push. Obviously, minus one and a half, you need them to win by two. So that's uh, just one little tidbit there and uh yeah we get out of here recap the orioles game tomorrow and um good luck everybody have a happy friday night